God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends, uh, let us begin the Mass now by taking a moment to call to mind our sins and asking the Lord for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave the martyr St. Thomas Becket the courage to give up his life for the sake of justice, grant through his intercession that, renouncing our life for the sake of Christ in this world, we may find it in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, the way we may be sure that we know Jesus is to keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the way we may know that we are in union with him. Whoever claims to abide in him ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am writing no new commandment to you, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. <clears throat> the old commandment is the word that you have heard. And yet I do write a new commandment to you which holds true in him and among you. For the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light yet hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let, Let the, the heavens, heavens be glad and, and the earth, earth rejoice. rejoice. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. <clears throat> Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. 
Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord made the heavens, splendor and majesty go before him. Praise and grandeur are in his sanctuary. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of every people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Gospel of the Lord. Uh, we are continuing in the octave of Christmas. Uh, the readings have to do with um, uh, the, the mystery of Christ. Who, who is he? And uh, the, one of the earliest prophecies connected with him uh, made by Simeon to the mother that uh, Jesus would be a sign of contradiction. And uh, it was described, the effect of it was described as a sword piercing her heart. So one of the um, artistic emblems of Mary's heart is the heart with the sword piercing through it. Um, whereas the sacred heart of Jesus is a little bit, little bit different. It has the crown of thorns and so forth. But the sword that pierced Mary's heart had to do with the, the vicarious suffering she would experience because of her son. And him being a sign of contradiction, it means that the world would oppose him in many ways. And if you read through any of the Gospels, Jesus encountered a great deal of opposition from many people. So it's something it's somewhat ironic if you think about, here we have God himself walking the face of the earth. You would think that everybody would embrace him. It, it didn't work out that way. And the reason is because one of the things the world does not like, the, the world of sophistication and power, does not appreciate somebody who's honest and who's holy. Uh, the saints are often rejected by the world. 
So we have Thomas Becket, who's, uh, who was a Catholic bishop in England in the 12th century. Uh, this is the 850th anniversary of his uh, martyrdom. He was executed in his own cathedral because uh, he was a sign of contradiction himself. He stood up for the rights of the church, and the king didn't like it, King, Hen king Henry II. But there have been many people, I mean, thousands of people who have been martyrs of, by blood, been, have been rejected by the world or have shared in Jesus' being a sign of contradiction. The cross itself is, is uh, really the summation of what we're talking about, that Jesus was crucified. Pontius Pilate could have exonerated him. He, there was an opportunity to get rid of some, to um, exculpate or uh, pardon someone. And Pilate, deep down inside, knew that Jesus was innocent, but the problem with Pilate was he was a politician who wanted to do what the crowd wanted, not so much what was right or wrong, uh, as his criterion. So instead of, getting, uh, instead of pardoning Jesus and, and putting Barabbas uh, on the cross, so to speak, who was, a, who was in fact an, exor an insurrectionist, he was, uh, he was not good, to say the least, he decided, well, let's pardon uh, Barabbas and we'll, we'll just crucify Jesus. So that's an example of perfidy or uh, a kind of a dissimulation with, with people, when people aren't honest about the truth and so forth. They end up doing things like that. Uh, and today, you know, people who are honest are often you know, people who get themselves into trouble because the world doesn't always like the truth. So we have to look to Jesus to be our shepherd, and he is our shepherd, and to be people who are authentic people, and not simply people who, who are wondering which way the wind is blowing. That's, again, it, which characterizes too many politicians to be people who are of truth. And if the world opposes us, maybe that's a good sign. Now, we don't necessarily look for that. I mean, we don't have to look for people who, or, or exacerbate this tendency for people to oppose us. But if it comes down to that, it comes down to it. We don't have to be liked by everybody. If people think we're strange because of our faith. But maybe that's a bonus, really. Not, not that we're wearing our faith on our sleeve so much. But we have to, in some ways, participate in Jesus' own son being a sign of contradiction, and not in an obnoxious way, that is the point, but just to be true, true to what we're about, what, what God wants us to be about. And um, as Jesus said in the Beatitudes, if they hate you and curse you and accuse you falsely because of me, you are blessed and indeed. Beloved brothers and sisters, we turn to our Father who hears our prayers. Please use the response. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world for her freedom to exercise the ministry the Lord has given her and that we may do our part in our corner of the world to advance the cause of the gospel of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for honesty in all areas of in human endeavor, um, including government and, and private sector and so forth, um, th and that we ourselves may be true to what we're called to be, even when the world may, may oppose us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for the needy, for the ill, for those who are, Ill, uh, who are sick because of the virus, and for all healthcare workers. And for the conversion of sinners everywhere, we pray to the Lord. And for Lisa Varga, for whom the Mass tonight is offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we th are thankful for the opportunity to come to the altar tonight. It's, it is a gift, it is an invitation which you've extended to us and the grace you've given to us to respond accordingly. We thank you. Please hear our prayers, not because we are so good or deserving, but because of your love and because of the acceptable sacrifice of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spirits and will drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, <clears throat> Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, to this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, for spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. May this mingle in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it. Sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Through the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will visit us.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. And Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace. Saint Michael, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>